I just went up on the board and I showed exactly where we were capturing the values and how we were calculating it. And then I showed how they were calculating OEE and why our number was right. And he got fired. All right, Yagit says, I very much respect your technical expertise on the industry 4.0 value chain. And I follow you from uh, different platforms. However, no one gets the 90% OEE as a quite a bold statement, which is not reflecting reality. I can tell you from my automotive experience, if a production line cannot reach 85% OEE after, after a ramp up period of 18 months, it's not a profitable production line. I've seen sustainable OEE trends over 90% of different production lines. Of course, it depends on the company and product maturity. The answer is no, you haven't. Um, what you have seen is a number that has been manipulated through various techniques. Uh, mo the most common techniques in the automotive industry to manipulate the OE number, is re there's really two of them. Number one, what they'll do is they'll only use two of the three underlying values to calculate OE. This is a very, very common one in the Japanese companies, where what they'll do is they'll only take uh, production and quality as part of their OE calculation. So they'll, they'll take performance, they'll take quality, they'll multiply those two together, and they'll say whatever that number is, that's the OEE number. And this is very common. We've seen it in dozens and dozens of examples of Japanese car manufacturers and their suppliers, okay? That's number one, the manipulation of the calculation to get the outcome that we want. But the biggest one that we see in the automotive industry, it's actually two that they kind of work together. Number one is the manipulation of um, runtime. So by adding in planned downtime that was never actually planned to be there. So you may get some cataclysmic event. Um, and what they'll do is rather than, what they'll do is they'll schedule a safety meeting during a long downtime outage so that what they can do is subtract 45 minutes from the downtime number so that we end up with a higher um, availability number than initially anticipated. That's a really, really common one, but the biggest one is rework. Never dinging the production line for rework. So say something gets through, say I've got a 16 cell line, I get to the fourth line, a fourth cell, and I've got to rework it, I've got to send it back to the second cell. They actually give themselves credit for a second run through instead of dinging their production line. So the, the reality is, is that you haven't seen 90% OEE. And, if, and what I would challenge you to do is to bring me to one of the sites that you think has 90% OEE, okay? I'll pay for it myself. Um, and then I'll show you how it's not 90% OEE. 90% uh, OEE is such a rare number. It, 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 is, it is incredibly rare and anybody and anybody who works in manufacturing execution we talk about this all the time I, I was using an example with one of these um japanese companies right if you look at the one you know i was we were working for a tier one automotive supplier that was was owned one of the largest tier one automotive suppliers in the world that was owned by a large japanese car manufacturer and we were brought in to build a manufacturing execution system on one area of the plant. So it was five production lines. And they were already calculating OEE, right? They were calculating it in the PLC and they were calculating it on paper. Okay. And the example I just gave to you was three of just three, just three of the mechanisms they used to manipulate the number. Their target OEE number was 82%. So what it was was none of the managers, none of the supervisors, would get their production bonus unless they hit 82% OEE. They brought us in to calculate the OEE, okay? They didn't, it was an engineer who brought us in and kind of snuck us in. He had $250,000 left over, brought us in. He knew that there was more gains to be captured. Um, they were calculating their OEE around 82, 83% um, religiously over the previous five years. We build a digital manufacturing execution system that accounts for rework, that accounts for the downtime, which they weren't calculating. And we use the standard OEE calculation. And their, their worst performing line had 26% OEE. Their best performing line had 42%. They were calculating it at 82. 
Now, the director of operations, both the Japanese mirror, so in Japanese companies, if they have American operations, they have like a Japanese manager who's equal to the American manager. And and really, the American manager is just sort of like a really is, doesn't have any authority. The Japanese manager is one who has the authority. The director, the American director of operations brought us into a, um, you know, he said, this your number's wrong. Threw up his arms, blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, it isn't. Um, and I could, you know, let's go and we'll, you know, he called this huge meeting. He had the process engineers. He had all of the Kaizen um, continuous improvement folks in there. And he had his mirror in there. And I just went up on the board and I showed exactly where we were capturing the values and how we were calculating it. And then I showed how they were calculating OEE and why our number was right. And he got fired. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you know, and I've shown these numbers a million times, you know, over the 18 months, they went from 4,000 units of waste a month down to 500. They went from 35,000 units of production per month to 70,000. Uh, for a company that had ostensibly had 82% OEE. And that's just one example of 100. I mean, the reality is here you get that this, you haven't seen 90%. And if you brought me in, I'd be able to show you how. And the reason why I know that is because I've only ever seen, you know, if you think about all the companies that have brought me in, I've worked with thousands of companies in my career. I've evaluated just, just in terms of evaluating manufacturers, 1,390-something manufacturers globally. Um, I've done major global implementations on now over 275 different companies. Um, 90 has existed exactly one time. That's it. And it's Tesla.